worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good, Hello. Afternoon, Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. 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 With thanksgiving, Amen. let us Hello, enter Lord. God's court Hallelujah. with praise. Hello. For this is praise the day God. that the Lord Hello, has made, Amen. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who's God. ready to praise the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Can I see the hands? Who's ready to praise the Lord today? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Can you please praise tell to the one next to you, I'm glad you are here. I'm glad, I'm glad you're glad here. You are here. I'm glad you're here. Praise I'm God. Praise I'm glad you're here. Praise are we ready Lord. to praise Amen. the Lord? Amen. 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 Can I ask everyone to yes. please stand up? As we praise the Lord today, as we exalt the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us clap our hands to God. Hallelujah. Woohoo! The Lord says in John 12, verse 32, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Amen. So Amen. as we praise the Lord today, as we exalt the Lord today, let us praise Him with thanksgiving. Let us praise the Lord with song and dance. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, let us praise the Lord. Let us clap our hands to God. Let us sing this song. You said if you be lifted. You draw all men to you. You said if you be lifted, you draw all men to you. So draw me, draw me closer. So draw me, draw me closer to you. I'm gonna lift you higher and higher. Gonna lift you up, oh Lord, I'm gonna lift you up, and I'm never gonna stop. Oh, in everything I've got, I'm gonna, I'm lift, gonna lift you up. up. Oh Lord, I'm gonna lift you up, and I'm never gonna stop. Oh, in everything I've got, I'm gonna lift you up. Can you see your hands clapping the Lord? Hallelujah. Let us give God the best clap offering of praise. Thank you, Lord. You said if you be lifted, you draw all men to you. You said if you be lifted, you draw all men to you. So draw me, draw me closer. Draw me, Lord. So draw me, draw me closer to you. I'm gonna lift you higher and higher. Gonna lift you up. Oh, Lord. And I'm never gonna stop Oh, in everything I've got I'm gonna lift you up Oh, Lord, I'm gonna lift you up And I'm never gonna stop Oh, in everything I've got I'm gonna lift you up the Lord. Is that the way how we lift up the Lord? Let us lift up the Lord with all our might, with all our strength, with all our hearts. Amen. Amen. Let us see the people of God praising the Lord today. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord, for 
you are worthy to be praised, oh God. We exalt you in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You said if you be lifted, you draw all men to you. You said if you be lifted, you draw all men to you. So draw me. So draw me. Draw me closer. Yes, God. So draw me. Draw me closer to you. I'm going to lift you higher and higher. going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up. And I'm never going to stop. Lord, with everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up. And I'm never going to stop. Oh, with everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up. And I'm never going to stop Oh, with everything I've got I'm going to lift you up I'm going to lift you up I'm going to lift you up People from every nation and town From generation to generation Come on, people! People from every nation and tongue, from generation Come on, people to from every nation. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Let us worship the Lord. You are, yes, you are. So good, so good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So you are good all the time, and all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good. All the time, and all the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, and all the time, you are good, you are good. You are good. All the time, and all the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, and all the time, you are good. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. Oh, yes, generation we will to worship generation. you. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Oh, we worship you. Worship the Lord in this place. 
Hallelujah. Oh, if that clap is for the Lord, let us give the best clap offering Woo! to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise the Lord. Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory to you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you in this place. For you are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. We honor you, O oh God. Yes, Jesus. The reason why we are here, because we want to give the highest worship to you, God. Yes, Lord. We want to honor you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We want to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord says in Hebrews 10, verse 23, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised... He's faithful. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is faithful in our lives. That's why today, as we seek Him, let us open our hearts and worship the Lord. Yes, Jesus. For He is good. Yes. He is faithful. He never changed. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, Lord Jesus. And He is worthy of our worship. Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we honor you in this place. Spirit, we welcome you. Oh, hallelujah. Touch our hearts, oh God. Hallelujah. We need your presence, oh Lord. Is you, oh God. Lord, I pray you know the heart of each individual that is here, God. You know their situation, oh Lord. I pray, God, the Holy Spirit, that whatever situation they are facing right now, I pray for your touch, oh God. Touch the heart and life of your people, oh Lord. Because we need you. We need you, our God. The creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Savior of my soul, I can find in you through all my darkest moment. In you I find my peace, my comfort when I'm weak. I trust in you through storm and raging seas you are faithful faithful you're my God you're the glory and the lifter of my head your light it fills my days your light it fills my days it leads me in your ways forever I surrender all to you Lord I live to worship you my Jesus Nothing will 
can stand between my Lord and me. Lord, I live to honor you. And I long to bring my life an offering. Take me higher. Draw me deeper. I give all to be with you. Let us sing, Savior. Savior of my soul, come on, worship the Lord with all your heart. I confide in you through all my darkest moments. In you I find my peace, my comfort when I'm weak. I trust in you through storm and raging sea. Faithful, you're my God. Yes, you are. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. Your light, it fills my days. It leads me in your ways. Forever I surrender all to Lord, I live to worship you. My Jesus, you're the only one for me. Nothing will ever take your place, my precious Savior. Who can stand between my Lord and Me deep. 
worship the Lord, sing a new song to God, for He is worthy, He is worthy to be praised. open our hearts and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you in this place, oh God. Lord, we pray that you continue to touch our hearts. Just one touch, God, the Holy Spirit. And we will never be the same again. Just one touch, oh God. Let us offer our hearts and life to God. True, 
clinging to the cross how far oh, this is our prayer you will be with him oh God we know that you will hide him behind your cross oh Lord Jesus touch his hands touch his heart oh God and I pray that you take away any nerves any anxiety anything that is building up inside him oh God I pray that you will be his stronghold I pray that you will be his father oh Lord God we thank you for all of the people that have come here today we know they came here for a purpose we know they came here expecting something great and that they will leave here, oh God, knowing that they have felt you, knowing that they have heard you, oh God. Give them the comfort of peace, oh Lord Jesus, to overflow in this place, oh God, and overflow in them. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for this day. Come on, church. We say thank you, oh God. Come on, we say thank you. We ask for deliverance. We ask for healing. And we ask for comfort to be brought in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you this day in Jesus' name. And I want everybody to declare and say amen, amen and amen, amen. Come on, church. Good afternoon. Why don't we greet our neighbors? Turn around, greet your neighbor. A happy Sunday. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Sunday. Come on, everybody out of their seats. Happy greet Sunday, one Paul. another. Happy Sunday. Amen. Amen. How are we all 
doing today, church? <laughs> There's only one person. How are we all doing today? Good. Oh, amazing. Okay. Are you guys ready for today? Because we have so many people that are going to be speaking life into you and into me. And, um, you know, we're so expected and we're so hungry for the word. And I hope you guys are too. But before that, we're going to get straight into our communion, which will be brought by Sister Jewel. Sister Jewel, everyone. Amen. Are you ready for our Holy Communion? Amen. Amen. So, for our Holy Communion, we'll have 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. So, communion is a sacred time because we have um, fellowship with the Lord. Amen. Uh, we... We want to say that um, during Holy Communion, we proclaim Jesus' death. Amen? So, there are some things I want to remind everyone before we take the Holy Communion. First is the word, uh, remember. Amen? So, during Holy Communion, we remember the body of Christ, which was broken for us. Amen? We remember His blood that was shed for us. Amen? The Lord loves us so much. That he has done these things for all of us. Amen. He took the pain. He took the diseases. Amen. He took the penalty of sins for us. Amen. When we are in uh, doing the Holy Communion, um, it's, it's also said in First Corinthians, it's also said that we have to take uh, the communion and we have to discern the body of God, the body of Christ. Amen. When we say discern, we have to recognize what the Lord has done for us. Amen. So when we took when we take the holy communion, um, God is giving us to be part of the new covenant. Amen. In the old covenant, it is between only Israel and God. Amen. With the new covenant, it was it is between God and all of mankind. Amen. So when we are taking the holy communion, we are um uh, in the presence of God in his table. Amen. Let us acknowledge who God is. Let us um, uh, ac acknowledge that we are sinners and we are helpless and we need God for salvation. Amen. So when we have this um, Holy Communion, let's uh, examine ourselves before we take the Holy Communion. Is there any unconfessed sin? Is there any, any anger or any jealousy? which we need to make it right to God. Amen. Because Holy Communion is not having only fellowship with God. It is, it is also about healing. Amen. When we said that by your stripes, oh God, we are healed. Amen. Because of your bro broken body, we became whole. Amen. So um, let's pray. Lord, as we take this uh, bread, oh God, Lord, remind us that um, this is the body which has been broken uh, for us, O oh God. Lord, let us remember uh, how you love us, Lord. Lord, we know that um, this uh, bread um, will make us um, whole again, O oh God, because you love us, O oh God. Lord, we cannot fathom, O oh God, the agonizing um, suffering you had in the crucifixion, O oh God. Lord, thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Let's take the bread. In the same way, Lord, we take this cup, O oh God, as a symbol of your uh, blood which was shed for us, Lord God. Lord, thank you for taking the penalty for our sin. Thank you, Lord, for the victory over death, Lord God. Lord, we declare, O oh God, that um, we are committing our life to you, O oh God. 
Lord, we pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. And Lord, thank you that our unworthiness, oh God, was nailed on the cross, Lord God. Lord, help us remember um, to be obedient to your word, to have this holy communion, Lord God. And help us, oh God, to share this a message faithfully, oh God, to our brothers and sisters, Lord God. Lord, we bring you back all the glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And yes, for our tithes and offering. Thank you, Sister Jewel. Amen. Are we ready to give? Yes, yes excited. All right. <laughs> My verse for today is in Malachi 3.10. Um, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house test me this says the lord almighty and see if i will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room store enough to store it amen so for those of you who are new tithes and offering is giving our 10 percent of all our income to the house of god but what the verse is saying is there are two folds Whenever we bring our full tithes to the house of God, the floodgates of heaven are open. So it's 10% you have floodgates. Then if you're going to ask me, Sister Deng, what about if it's 5%? 50% of the floodgates. So <laughs> what are you going to give? 100% or 50%? So if you're asking God for a Lexus UK, I, uh, UX, I'm going to give 5%. You're probably going to get a Yaris crossover. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> the Lord is just. Amen? Now, that was my verse when I was 10. And, of course, I evolved. As a believer, I evolved. And my actual verse for today is in Matthew 28, 16. Everybody knows this, right? Right? LGN West, right? Matthew 28, 16, the Great Commission. Oh, come on, LGN West. I thought we talked about this. <laughs> well, anyway, it says here, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. And that is our commission. You know why I love this verse? Because um, when I was 10, I loved Malachi 3.10 for tithes. But as I grow in my faith, I understood what Jesus did. He said, all authority is given to me. He did not lord over us. Instead, he gave us a commission. And that is to make disciples out of men. But some of you might go, oh, Sister Deng, we have a job, we have a family, we cannot go to the mission field. But there are those people who do that. There are those people who do full-time ministry. There are those people who do part-time ministry. And every time we give to the house of God, we become partners with them. We're allowing them to fulfill their commitment to the ministry, to the Great Commission. And as partners, as partners, we become invested. So every time we give to the house of God, we become invested in what? In the function of the church, in the life of the people. And it's something that makes us part of the Great Commission, the Kingdom of God, right? And I will end it in, in my testimony. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I was in Altona Life Group, and I was in a bit of a pickle because we finished a little bit over midnight, a bit about midnight. <laughs> and I was texting one of our sister, come on, you gotta wake up early because uh, we have our women's life group fellowship in the morning. And I said, it's gonna be a battle between the bed and St. Ovens. And then I said to her, you know who we are? We are rainmakers. Every time we have an event, we open the opportunity for people to encounter the Lord. And that will not happen without your support, without the full-time workers, the part-time workers, and the volunteers. So every time you give to the house of God, remember this, you are making rain. 
and we are rainmakers. Amen? So if you join me in prayer, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, Lord, today we honor you with our tithes and offering. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us all the authorities in heaven to be part of the Great Commission. Lord, we thank you for considering us an equal, O oh God, with the authority to disciple men and bring them closer to you. Lord, I pray that for all the givings that we will do today, may we be pleasing to you. May it put a smile on your face. May you consider us partners in the kingdom. May we value life as we encounter them, O oh God. May we not lose faith, no matter how difficult it will be to win people, O oh God. I, we pray and we believe that you will bring more people to join us in our commitment for the ministry to join us in fulfilling the Great Commission. Lord, for the stewards of the fund, I pray that you guard their hearts. Give them the wisdom to govern. Make them do the right allocation, O oh God, that everything that they will do is to glorify you, to honor you, and to expand the kingdom of God on earth. Lord, once again, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ding and Sister Jewel. Okay, so I just have a few announcements to make before we get into the word. Um, but first of all, we want to say a big welcome to Sister Mary Lou Ignacio. Thank you for coming. Hello. We have also Sister Eden Salazar. Hello, thank you for coming. And this has been one of our biggest prayers. Um, Brother John Neil Guanlao with his wife, Joanna, and son, Zachary. The family and the brother of Brother Noel. We've been praying for them, and we're so happy that you arrived here safely. So welcome to Melbourne, and welcome to JIL, everyone. Um, so thank you for coming here today. And before we start, uh, we do have a video that we would like to show. So if you can please look towards the screen. Hey, what's up? Whoa, he's animated! But that's not important. You know what it is? Believe it or not, it's finally happening. Sports Fest 2023. So, here's our list of sports. With a festival spread over three days and two main events at these lovely venues. Whoa, so shiny! Get your game face on and get excited. Whether it's badminton, basketball, volleyball, or you're just there to support, we'll see you there at JAL Sports Fest 2023. Also, just to note, the day one of the main events will be on the 29th of September at Zone Villawood, while day two for court games will be on the 30th of September at Bankstown Stadium. Wait, there's also a design competition for the jersey. Again, that's JAL Sports Fest 2023 on the 29th to the 30th of September. We'll see you there and God bless. For the details, please Amen. Will you look at that, everyone? Can you believe it? Our Sports Fest after four years is happening. And it was all shown there 29th of September to 30th of September at two different locations, which we have all the details shown behind us. Do not worry, we do post this on our Facebook page. But how are our basketball team, volleyball team going? Are we doing well? Come on, we have to beat the other, you know, outreaches. So please make sure you are active. The more we are getting closer to the day, I know we can be a little bit stressed, but this is all for fun, okay? All for fun. Um, so yeah, make sure you have looked at your Airbnbs, locations that you'll be staying at. Please make sure you know where you are going, if you're carpooling, or um, there are many ways to get there, of course, but whichever is suitable for you. 
um, make sure you do that now, okay? So lastly, we also have our live group bowling night, which is happening next week on Saturday, okay? Yeah, come on, it's happening next Saturday, 25th of June, um, 6 p.m. And where will it be held? At QV in the city. Um, they have a bowling area there, which is called Strike, $22 per head. So please make sure you support your life group and your life group leaders. Please make sure you RSVP to them that you are going or if you are unable to go either way. So if you need more information, please see our lovely Sister Deng, who is the head of our LGN coordinators. Um, so yeah, everything will be posted on our Facebook page. Okay, so I will be handing the mic to Pastor Bong, who will be sharing something with us. Hello, hello, JIL Melbourne. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? Praise God. Welcome to church, uh, ma'am, another lady here, and also to the Guanlao family. Welcome to church. Uh, before we introduce our speaker, I'll call on Sister May just to greet. Pastor May is the wife of Pastor Jerry. Go. Thank you, Pastor, Pastor Bong. And uh, it's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Are you excited? Amen. Who enjoyed the worship? Did you enjoy the worship? I don't know about you, but... I felt the presence of God while we are singing a while ago. And it's just good that every, every time that the, the children of God gathering in, in His house, you know, um, a while ago, uh, Sister Victoria was like uh, saying about expectation. Are you expectant tonight, today, church? Amen. Because, oh, good afternoon first, everyone. And uh, really, it's just wonderful to see uh, a lot of people, Pas Pastor Bong and Pastor Ann, and it's just good to be in, in this family, JIL Melbourne family. It's been a while, Paul. So again, let's give a hand of praise to our God. I think the last time that we were here was uh, pre pandemic, that was 2018. And I think you were on the other, other um, uh, place. But it's just good, Pastor. It was just so exciting. I can see a lot of new faces and new families. So uh, thank you all for coming. I know uh, most of you came or drove like hours just to be here, just to join us and uh, praise together uh, in His name. And, uh, and I know Sister Ruth, uh, Ruth is who drove two hours. My goodness. Can we just give a Lord a hand of praise? Amen. Wala pong, there's no, uh, uh, no amount of uh, distance or space for those who, who love God. Amen. Who love God and who just want to be here to worship Him. And, uh, um, you know, I just want to uh, say something about expectation because I know you're not here just to come because someone invited you. But I know a lot of us are here today because... Uh, you are expectant because you know in the very hearts of yours that there is going to be a great and a beautiful and wonderful that God will do in this place. Amen? Because expectation, can you say expectation? expectation. is a breathing ground of miracle. Amen? So when you are expectant, it is a breathing ground of miracle. So what are you expecting tonight? Amen. Whatever your prayers in your heart, I believe God is uh, looking into your heart right now. Because when, when there is a heart of expectation, uh, it's, it says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, 26, it says, A heart of expectation believes that with God all things are? possible. Amen. So we will hold on on that on that promises that something good, something great for those who are ex who expect in Jesus name. So thank you and God bless you and uh, I'm so excited. And kinakabahan na po kami on September 29. We are so excited to uh, uh, to be with you and to join us in in JL Sydney, huh? JL Sydney. And I heard you are, the JIL Melbourne family are more than 
uh, more than prepared. All right? More than prepared. My goodness, I'm already nervous, huh? So we need to prepare. So church, God bless you all, and we love you, and uh, uh, we can't wait to be with you on September 29th. So thanks for having us, Pastor Bong and Pastor Ann, and uh, congratulations. And in behalf of Sydney, Jail Sydney Leadership, God bless you all. Amen. Praise God. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? Come on, you can do better than that. To God be the glory. First, congratulations to the Tan family, Bella and Wynn. Huh? Last time we went out, it was Puyat Tan. And Sister Anne says, Puyatan. Wow, huh? I don't know, what's that in English? Huh? Lack of sleep. Oh, 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 staying too, too late at night. <laughs> Praise God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 7, give honor due to people that we need to honor. Right? So uh, our, our speaker for today, many of you don't know, he is our director for Jesus is Lord Church, Oceania, that comprised of 30 plus churches all over Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific. And uh, it was a, it's a privilege for us as a family, including uh, Sister Anne, Pastor Anne, that we were in the same house. He is my pastor. He is my pastor. <laughs> yeah. We were privileged because we came from the same house. And many of you probably know that all those people that traveled overseas to plant the church all over Australia, even New Zealand, came from the same house. So it's, I need to give that honor. He is my mentor and my pastor, as I said, the pastor of my family. And uh, I'm blessed. I used to call him back in the day, my, my little David. Even though there's a Goliath in front, right? There's a David who's conquering Goliaths. So uh, I'm, I'm not taking the time. So let's just give the uh, glory to God for the life of Pastor Jerry Ignacio. God is good. You may be seated. Thank you. Oh, there's a note here, 25 minutes, pastor only. Okay? <laughs> no kidding. How are you doing? Yes, I, you know, me and Sister May enjoyed our moments with you guys, especially at the wedding of uh, Wynn and Bella. You know, Bella, when she was uh, a baby, I did the, the christening, like the dedication. When she's a teenager, I you know, did her baptism. And last Thursday, I officiated their wedding, Will, uh, Win and, and, and Bella. You know what? After that, you know, I went to the toilet and I looked on the mirror and I said, I did the christening, I did the water baptism, I did the officiating on the wedding. And I said to myself, Jerry, you're old. <laughs> Isn't it? Sipin po niyo when she's child and teenager, and now what a wonderful uh, lady she is. And uh, congratulations, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tan. Okay, let's just pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. Let your name be exalted. To you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if I have a title to share it with you, I entitled this message, Into the Storm. There you go, into the storm. You know what? That this narrative was written by three writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, probably because it is so much to learn. There's so much uh, pressure to each and every one of us to understand and embrace it. You know, on my personal meditation on this, the Lord unlocks such a wonderful revelation.
May prayed as we never prayed before. We thought it's just like a few hours that will easily, you know, passing by, and then immediately the aftermath of. dead or casualties of that storm. So I'd like to share it with you how the experience of these disciples got when they were at the storm. If we can just see on the next page, probably these are the lessons that we can able to learn on this storm yet. Let us all read it together, if you don't mind. This is the narrative. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep as on a pillow, and they, they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are all perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to them, To the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And that they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And I hope that you understand in your immediate reading about the narrative. So therefore, to understand this narrative, you should relive it. You should be there, at least in our own way of experiencing a different kind and nature of a storm. For me, we are all facing this kind of storm, as I mentioned a while ago, in a different kind of setting, image, nature of it, like the COVID pandemic really is a big storm that we all never expected. Grabe po ang storm na to. Took so many lives, millions of lives, and until now, people are still recovering. The economy of Australia is still in recession, for your information. The economy of the world is still finding the best answer for them to recover. Not only that, you know, there is a storm that immediately hit even our shore, a war in, in Ukraine. Energy, you know, it's too expensive nowadays. I think seven times of eight times, interest rate went up. And the future as if it is uncertain, because the storm as it is not stopping and keep on coming and touching all the way we live. So today, probably not only in the political, geographical, or even in the economic situation, but as well as in personal. You know, probably you lose loved ones. As some of you, probably your relationship is on the rock. Some probably their future is so dim. And but I'm telling you, let, let this storm teach us the great lessons in life. Are you ready? So there are four lessons to learn into this storm. I want you to engrave them in the tablets of your heart. The calm before the storm. The calm during the storm. The calm after the storm. And the claim behind the storm. Are you ready? Okay, I'll repeat that again. The calm before the storm, the, the calm during the storm, and the calm after the storm, and finally, the claim behind the storm. So let us learn. Point number one, which is the calm before the storm. On the same day when evening had come, he said to him, let us, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Let us cross over to the other side. And that is the statement of Jesus. That when he challenges his disciple to go with him just to cross over, over that lake. So that they may probably deal with some special mission. And the disciple what? 
it is a choice for them to make. Listen, please, and, and look at me. The calm before the storm. This is the calm, and that is the storm. So many people nowadays, they choose to be on the calm side. They want to be on the safe side. They want, they, they hate that their ship to be rocked. And they want to stay where the peace be still is. But Jesus said, come, let us cross over. Let us cross over. You know, I have witnessed so many people that they fail to advance in their lives because they choose to be on the very calm side. Could you tell your neighbor, please? God called you to sail, not to stay. You know, I got so many friends way back in the Philippines and that before I sail my future and I try that I think that there is more ahead of me, you know, who will be? Who will choose to live in such a comfort zone? You know, I got friends that, you know, we call them, we call ourselves our standby. You know, in the Philippines, my standby. You know, we're at 18 or probably 16 and yet we're already pensioners. <laughs> Meaning we are not working and yet we're receiving something. And then mom would just say, okay, it's time to eat. Lunch, dinner, breakfast, we don't do nothing. We are just sitting in a, in a certain place playing guitar. We are not moving anywhere and yet we enjoy our lives. It is a peaceful life. It is a calm. We call it, we choose to stay. A safe side. And we enjoy that. We enjoy that. But there is no future in a calm side of life. But you will need to make a choice for you to cross over. It is uncertain, yes. It is a boundary that you've never been before. But it is a choice of leaving your own comfort zone. And I made that choice. And I made that choice. If I will go back right now after 35 years ago, in the same place, I can still see familiar people, familiar They're still there. Under the Meral Copos. <laughs> singing Kumbaya. And they never move. A bit in their lives. Why? Because they choose to be on the safe side. They choose to be in a place of comfort. You know, dream is meant to follow. Nothing happened to a dreamer that until that we will set to a sail. Nothing will gonna happen that until that you will say. I choose to go. I choose to step in. It doesn't matter that there is storm out there. That is the only thing that I can able to chase my dream. When I embark into what I call it 747 Boeing Qantas, and I was so afraid. That was my very first time that I was going over this. And I said to myself, Lord, I don't want to leave Philippines. That everything is so familiar. That even you close your eyes, you know you're safe. The language, the culture, anything in it are all what I call calm before the storm. I choose to be in there, the calm before the storm. And I love that. But on that day, step into that plane, my goodness, my heart. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> book, 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 book. Now I'm leaving everything that I know. All the familiar place. But then I learned that God designed me to sail, not to stay. Can we have a hand for Jesus, please? The Lord designed you. Could you tap the person next to you and says, the Lord designed you to sail, not to stay. 
isn't it? For example, the, for example, the newlywed that they embark to a new and a promising future. It is challenging, and yet you will never, never know unless that you will never, never go. Isn't it? You cannot able to define your purpose, able to reach your destiny if you are in a safe place. All of my friends, I'm telling you, they never advance in life because they choose to stay. They're still there. Until at night, still they're counting stars. But they, the difference between me and them, I choose to sail. Amen? I choose to sail. So please, step into that. I know a lot of you, you paid so much sacrifice. You sold your uh, house, right? You sell everything, including bantai. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, you sell everything, your house, including your dog, so that you're able to, to pursue your promised land. It hurts, but hey, anything what you have right now, that would be the reward of not staying, but sailing. Amen. A hand for Jesus, please. <laughs> you know, the Filipino spirit resilient is this. We are not afraid of the end of the world. The Filipinos, they are not afraid of the end of the world. They are afraid of the end of the month. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> huh? During the GFC, during the GFC, a CNN newscaster went to the Philippines and says, do you know, you know, you know how you're able to handle GFC? It is global financial crisis. And the Filipino says, what is the GFC? Is that the new brand of KFC? <laughs> Isn't it? You know, when they were in the storm, you know, Filipinos are just as if playing around. They enjoyed everything. That's why we are not afraid about the end of the world, the end of the month, yes, <laughs> when we are paying our bills. <laughs> point number two, I'm running out of time, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, point number two, the calm during the storm. Okay, the calm during the storm. Here we go. In verse 31 or 37, and great windstorm arose and waves beat into the boat. So that it was already filling, but he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You know, Jesus is always on the go. Jesus back then, 2,000 years ago, 2,023 years ago, Jesus Christ doesn't have a PA. He doesn't have a person who is just setting up all of his schedules. And yet, he's the most busiest person. There is no dull moment. Because Christ understood the word sense of urgency. What must be done for 30 years, Christ accomplished it in three years of his time. There is no brake pedal. Everything is in, in a mode of accelerating. He does so many things. And in this point, that the, the, the second point that we can learn, it, it reveals Christ's humanity. It reveals Christ's humanity. You know why? Because he got tired. I think this, before that they went into that boat, Christ already done a series of evangelistic work, touching so many lives, healing so many people. And he was so tired. That's why that when he was in the boat, Jesus was asleep. You know, first time in my life that when I, I think, I don't know, it is a, uh, a domestic flight, and I was so tired. And I didn't felt the noise or hear the noise of the airplane because you were so tired. But never in my life 
that I can able to sleep in the plane because it's too noisy. But there was a time that I was so tired. You know, I ignored everything. And because your body is saying that you must. That is Jesus Christ. He was on that situation. And it is a violent storm recorded. And Jesus is sleeping. How many of you that we are tempted to wake him up? That we thought that he's no longer in control. That when there is this violent storm of life. Touch your family, touch your economy, touch your future. And immediately you are begging, Lord, wake up. God, wake up or else, Lord, I'm sinking. If you will not wake up, Lord, I will make a decision. I will turn my back to you. How many of you are in that kind of, of a, a very thin line or, or last string of your life and you're saying, Lord, if you will not show up, if you will not wake up, Lord, God, I'm telling you, Lord, th that's it for me. That's it for me. It's similar in this situation that these disciples, as if they were going to die. Jesus was so tired, and yet Jesus was so peaceful. How are we can able to do that? po ba ninyo that how Jesus managed it? Can we turn the page, please? So that you may see what kind of a storm it is, okay? So that you have an idea why. Imagine po, come, no, before, before the storm, I think is not in there probably. But there are some recorded storms in our history. You know, Jesus is listening. Jesus is sleeping and the disciples are screaming. These guys were professional uh, fishermen. They were on the lake every day, probably for their whole life. This man spent every day on the lake. This man had been in the storms many times before. These guys were not like that. I want you to picture this book. Sumama kayo. Could you tell your neighbor, please, be on the board and be on the boat, but be quiet. Because <laughs> you will not understand this scenario not until that you imagine that you were there. Look at me, please. These fishermen, they know how to be in the storm. Am I right? They've been there. But not this kind of a storm. It is a storm that they can only see that will be the end of their lives. Actually, over in the Matthew, it uses the word seismology, while Mark used it, penned it with the word pierce, a storm. And look, account is violent storm. Here we go. Para magkaroon po tayo ng understanding. Just to have an understanding. You know, the deadliest storm. In Bola Cyclone in Bangladesh. This is a cyclone, a storm. 1970. Death toll estimated 150,000 to half million. Hooghly River Cyclone in India and Bangladesh. This is 1737. Do you know how many people died? 350,000 on that storm. Haigon Typhoon in Vietnam in 1881, that toll is 300,000. Coringa Cyclone in India in 1839, that toll is 300,000. In Barkegan Cyclone in Bangladesh in 1584, that toll is 200,000. In Clintagong Cyclone in Bangladesh, 1897, that toll is 175,000. Super Typhoon in Nina in China, 1975, that toll is 171,000. Cyclone OTB, O2B, they, they name it, they name it, they name it OTB. Bangladesh in 1991, that toll is 140,000. 
in great Bombay cyclone in India from the Arabian Sea, 1882, death toll is 100,000. Guys, they measure this kind of storm. They measure this kind of storm. They will not cry out and say, Lord, wake up, and we are dying. They will not bother the Lord. If what they can see is just an ordinary storm. But they were tempted to say, Lord, if you will not wake up, we will all will be going to die. But and yet, you know, one thing that they have forgotten that they have the J factor in their boat, isn't it? Teacher, pay attention. This teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You know, the lesson on the calm during the storm is this. You have the master. I don't know what kind of, uh, uh, what, what kind of difficulties that you are facing right now. It is better to sail in the midst of the storm with Christ than sailing it without, with a peaceful environment. Third point, the calm after Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so faithful? Are fearful. How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. Could you underline the word? And they feared exceedingly. Could you say the word with me? And they feared exceedingly. And said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? The calm during the storm, it revealed Christ humanity because he was so tired that's why he slept but the calm after the storm it reveals Christ's sovereignty that when he command the storm to peace be still take note please then he arose and he said and rebuked the wind and said to the wind peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You know, the scriptures tell us that after the threat of nature was removed by Jesus, instead of eliminating the disciples' fear. Look at me now, please. And I don't want you to miss this. During the storm, during the storm, it says there, during the storm, they are all afraid to die. Have you experienced a near death? When that kind of fear that elevate that experience of, I don't know, that kind of fear that disciples, they define the storm that will be their last. That is the reason that why they were tempted to wake the master. These people are fishermen. Fishermen. They know as far as the storm is concerned. But on that moment, they were all afraid. They were frightened with this storm. The fear of dying. Look at me, please. This is it. But when Jesus commanded the storm to peace be still, their fear is exceeding. Exceedingly, here we go, here we go. It is no longer about fear of dying, but fear of a presence of a someone who is so mighty. It is the presence of God. That kind of fear, exceedingly, the scripture says, please. And they fear, 41, him exceedingly. And they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obeyed him? The greatest fear is not about fear of dying. That later on that they were so afraid during the calm, ju during, during the storm, they were all afraid about dying. 
But the fear that was used here is fear with exceedingly in the presence of the Almighty. That kind of fear. Uh, <laughs> I hope hindi po na mission. I know that when you are in your worship with God, that before that you are so afraid what will gonna happen about this future during the pandemic, you know, we lost our job, you know, this kind of fear, you know, we are all afraid. Everybody is, is a suspect, even your wife and you and your husband, you know, uh, with all this social distancing, you know, we don't know what the future ahead of us. We are all afraid of dying, isn't it? Of losing the censor, the center t certainty of our future. We are all afraid. But when we enter into the presence of our God, that when we worship him, immediately that when Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, presented himself in the midst of our storm, we are in the same thing of exceedingly fear. And this is so different. It is the presence of God that give us all the assurance. Amen. Listen, please. The storm is not where you face the enemy. Actually, the storm is where you will meet your God. Let me say that again. We are all afraid about the storm because as if we are meeting the devil during our storm. Sir, ma'am, it's not. But actually in our storm, it's not the meeting about the enemy of our faith. But actually, it is an encounter with your God. This storm is not about your enemy. The storm is about the presence of your God. That's why they were in the presence of the Almighty. That one says, who is this? You know, I study the Bible. After this, I study the gospel. There is no in the, written in the Bible that the disciples have mentioned the same kind of a statement. You know, that when Jesus raised up Lazarus, they never say that word exceedingly. You know, when Jesus did so many miracles, only in the Bible in this particular moment because that they are now in the presence of God. That's why they were so afraid, not of dying anymore, but they were so afraid about God himself. Amen. Grabe po, ano? Sana po din na mission. I hope that you never miss that. Lastly, and I'll end here. It is all now about the claim behind the storm. Now, when Jesus, if you turn your Bible, please, in Mark chapter 5, because you will not understand the very mission of this. In Mark chapter 5, it is a, a continuation of this story. It's in Matthew chapter 5. The storm is in Matthew chapter 4, but the claim, look at me, please, the claim is in, Ma in, in Mark chapter 5. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord had done for you and how he has a compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis. The word Dika in Greek is ten cities. Okay? All that Jesus had done for him and at all marveled. This is my conclusion, guys. This is the most important thing, actually. It's not the storm. This is the pinnacle. This is, this is the epitome of this experience about the storm, and that is the claim. Eto po, listen. The disciples, okay, this is the boat. Let me just, okay. This is the boat. They were so tired. They were in awe. 
with the presence of God. Oh, man. You know what? I believe the reason why there is this vehement storm that we survived and we overcame, I think Jesus made a special appointment to a very prominent person that is worthy of giving our lives. I think probably it will be the governor of the city. Probably, I think it's the king. But when they were on the shore, not far away, that they were confronted with a demon possessed. And that is the mission of Jesus. That is the reason why Jesus said, let us cross over. It is not because of the governor. It is not about the whoever prominent. It's just for a particular person, a person who is demon possessed, a cast away. We call it a waste person. Probably they are scratching their head and says, man, we gave our lives for this piece of waste. <laughs> Hello? Man, look. Am I, am I, it's just Jesus did ask us to, to go to this storm. He knew everything about this storm and then is it just for this? All this experience about this storm is just this man who the, even the world doesn't care. How many of you watch Saving Private Ryan? How many of you? You know, eight of them that were there, they, they receive a mission so that they just to find Private Ryan. And the eight soldier says to, to Captain Miller, did you pick us just to die for this man that we even do, do not know who he is? You know, Captain Miller says, this Ryan thing, he should be worth saving. He should be worth saving. Because one by one they died just because for this man, Ryan. The disciple is the same way. Lord, man, we cross life and death just for this, for this nothing. But he got saved. But on the day that he got saved, he wanted to come with Jesus. Jesus said, no, you will tell what happened to you. You know what? Ten cities came to the kneel before Christ. They got saved because of Jesus Christ. Just this one man, just this one man that Christ had saved. The whole city, ten cities, Decapolis, ten cities came to know Jesus Christ. Is it worth saving? Yes. Yes. Sometimes you have so much storm in, in your life, but you fail to claim it. Because there is this treasure, what I call it, claim behind the storm. Claim your, your prize, your reward. Let me end this, please, one, one, two minutes, if I may. In our community in Tidagula, there is this man who is so bad in his life. He robbed people. And he's addicted in gambling. One day that he saw in, a, in an ad that there is this wealthy Chinese who is willing to pay a sum of money for a kidney donor. This guy, because he was so bad, he was an, an evil influence in our community. You know, families, they hated him. And, and begging their children not to just to associate with this guy. I witnessed that. So this man, what he did, he went to, you know, to this wealthy Chinese and gave half of his kidney and sell his kidney for 50,000 pesos. 50,000 pesos back then. Still a lot of money. So one day he got saved and he's testifying in our group. And I asked him this, you know, how long it will last your 50,000 pesos? You know, Jerry, he told me, every time that I gamble, you know, piece by piece, I am betting my kidney. <laughs> it only lasts Two weeks because he's addicted in, in gambling but he got saved 
one day the Lord touched his life. You know, our barangay or our community, my goodness, it changed because of this one man. Those moms and dad who hated him, they begged him, can you bring my, 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 my son, you know, wherever you go? Because they saw a change of life. And most of our community got saved because of him. Why? Because he was touched by the Almighty. This demon-possessed in gathering, he is worse. Amen? That is the reason for that storm. Guys, claim your blessing. Can we all stand up, please? Hallelujah. Did you receive it from your heart? J.I.L. Melbourne, listen to, to this, please. We've been through this storm almost three years. Guys, please, for three years, for three years, now, the business is open. The community is open. We can make trade with our gospel. We can tell the, those people that there is hope in Christ. This is the moment. This is the time. We almost died during pandemic of this storm. We almost died. But now it's open. Claim your reward. Amen. Tell them about Jesus. You know, bring your community to Christ. Amen. Your wonderful testimony. Can we just sing this song? Hallelujah. And we pray after this song. Hallelujah. again find rest my soul find rest my soul in Christ alone in Christ alone no And 
I will be still and know you are God. I will be still know you are God. And I will be still know you that we forget who is with us on your own sailing I rather to choose to sail in the middle of the storm than sailing in a peaceful place and yet just by myself because the natural tendency is that what we define the storm is meeting the enemy of our faith, but actually is the opposite. That in your storm, it is a divine appointment of meeting your God. Amen. The disciple they miss it for a while. They thought they were abandoned. God, Christ, Christ, please. If you will not wake up, we will all die. You know, we're all in the same situation. Being in this storm is quite painful, uncertain. We don't know what to do in the middle of this storm. But please, please, one thing that you should not forget. Remember, Christ is in your boat. All of my regrets in my life, you know what? All of my regrets in my life that when I sail alone, when I made those decisions by myself, when I crossed over with my own mind, with my own possibility, with my own resources, and I failed you again and again and again, because it's just me. Lord Jesus. Victory on victory, Lord God. Yes, so good. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. One more time. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Let us declare victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is really good. Let us declare His goodness in our lives. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Come on, J.I. and Worship Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah, we worship you. For well, who you are, we worship you. We worship you. For who you are, you are good. Let us clap our hands to God. Come on. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, declare in your life. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. J.I.L. people. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation. Let us generation. worship the Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. For who you are, we worship you, oh God. Who you we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. For who you are, let all the joy I am now and worship the Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We for who you are, for who you are, for who you are, you are great. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. The most important time is a time to uh, acknowledge God in this place. So if many of you who are here for the first time and many of you who kind of like asking yourself, is, is Christ in my life? The Word of God says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is, is Lord. He died for you and for me. Just declaring that, the Bible says you are saved. So I invite everybody who are here 
and asking our Lord Jesus Christ to be in their lives. All heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If that's you, sir, if that's you, ma'am, say this prayer aloud with me. Come on, church. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank you for today. Thank you for today. I declare with all my heart, I declare with all my heart that I am a sinner. That and I need a Savior. And I need Forgive a savior. me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. And I believe with all my heart. And I believe it with you, all are my heart. That you are faithful and just to forgive all my sins. All my I, sins. Declare today I declare today that you died for me. That you died for and you me. rose again from the dead. And rose again from I, dead. Declare today I declare today that Jesus that Jesus is Lord. is Lord. You're my friend. You're my, friend. You're my, guide. You're my guide. You're my teacher. You're my teacher. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray. And we say amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. So before we close in prayer, hallelujah. Yeah. We have something for Pastor Jerry and Pastor May. Yeah. Uh, I know. All right. We're good, huh? We're good. Good, Pop. Houston, we have a problem. Ne? Okay. So we have something for you, Pastor. And Pastor May. Yeah. And to Pastor Jerry. Um, yeah. And. Um, yeah. <laughs> so before we close. Thank you, J.I.L. Melbourne. Thank you, J.I.L. Melbourne, for your love. And um, praise God. And uh, thank you, Pastor, Pastor May, for visiting J.I.L. Melbourne. And, you know, even though it's a bit cold, he weathered the storm. Huh? You know, sabi ko sa kanya, Pastor, talagang ganyan ng Melbourne. Weather, weather lang. Praise God. Join me in prayer. Come on. Lord, we thank you for today. Even in the story that we heard from Saving Private Ryan, Sergeant Miller was played by Tom Hanks. He, he was in the, in the middle of that storm because they need to save Ryan. And all his men were fighting against him, saying, why do we need to do that? We are all dying, one by one. You made a mistake. We heard today, let's not miss our storm, because the storm in our lives, heavy, small storm, big storm, greater storms, was designed and made and given by you to groom us for others. It's true to your word that you said to Abraham, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. So today, O oh God, we acknowledge your word. Even Sergeant Miller, after all the commotion of fights among his men, he paused for a while and ran to a corner quietly by himself and he was crying. Because he was thinking, did I make a mistake? Bringing all these guys with me. And they're all dying in my leadership. In my watch, they're all dying. But somehow, they have saved Private Ryan at the end. So Lord, we thank you. Today, salamat po Dios For all our storms. They were there for a reason. Many of us felt like giving up, quitting, but some of us clinged on, called on to your name because you said in your word, where do I look up into the mountains? Where do my help comes from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of everything. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your messenger. Thank you for the couple, Pastor Jerry and Pastor May, Ignacio, that they have 
showed us, it showed me and my family. There's no regret walking through the storm with you, God. Thank you for their lives. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy. But most of all, God, oh God, that fervent, fervent prayers of their heart. It says in Matthew 28, Go therefore and preach the gospel. Yes, win people for Christ. Bless them. Bless them, God, from the tip of their head to the sole of their feet. Holistically, oh God, beyond, beyond, beyond measure, oh God. Most of all, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name that their love, their intimate love for you will just grow, grow stronger, Lord. And they will influence countless of lives while they're still here on planet Earth. I give you praise. Come on, J.I.L. Melbourne. Pray with me. Keep us safe today, wherever we go. Hold us in your harmony, God. And may we be people that will continuously say, you are good and you are good all the time. To you all the praise, to you all the glory. And God's children say, amen and amen, amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless everyone. See you next Sunday.